is up guys it is capital coasters here and welcome back to another video uh, as you can't tell by now the video from yesterday was an april fool's video so no i did not delete my channel i'm still here but today i'll be bringing you a video on the top 10 coasters that i think could become my number one if i rode them or for some of these rewrote them so this includes coasters i have and haven't ridden but i think if i rode them or for some of these if i got more rides on i think it could become my favorite coaster since this is an it in any particular order however there are some i think that are uh, have a better chance of becoming my number one than others and i got this video idea from some other people like mr roller coasters and coaster watch but let's just get right into the video so the first coaster i'll be talking about is x2 at six flags magic mountain and this coaster looks crazy this is the insane aerodynamics 4d coaster at the park this was actually the first 4d coaster ever built and it's still one of the best it it's one of the most intense and disorienting coasters out there. It's a very unique ride. It has a really insane looking drop. It has crazy looking rain and turns. It has some cool like twisting flip looking elements. It even has like a backflip type element which looks great. Um, now there are some flaws with this ride from what I've heard um, and just from looking at the POVs. Uh, it does look to have some like pacing issues as there is a slower turnaround after the backflip where you definitely do lose a lot of momentum so that is a bit unfortunate and it is a bit of a shorter ride but it definitely looks like a really intense crazy ride and it even has onboard audio which is really cool so x2 i don't think it would be coming number one i think it has a chance and so that's why it's making the list all right so the next coaster kind of staying along the lines of x2 is ijinika and dino Conda at fuji q highland and china dinosaur park and basically take X2, but make it bigger, taller, faster, more flippy, and give it crazier elements, and take out all the pacing issues, make it just as intense and disorienting, and just crazier. So you have the drop, which is pretty similar, but you have uh, the first Raven turn, which actually has an additional backflip at the top of it, unlike X2, instead of the regular backflip on X2 after the Raven turn, you have a zero G roll, which actually does not invert, because you're flipping, which I've heard gets crazy airtime. And the turnaround is even more insane. It's like this huge overbank, it's really steep and a lot faster and just looks insane. Uh, you have that twisting flip, which is pretty similar. Uh, the last Raven turn looks just as intense. And then that final transition into the brake run looks even faster, more intense. And on each Nika, um, you actually tilt forward on the brake run, so you're facing the uh, ground when you're. Uh, hitting the brake run, which looks crazy at that speed. So basically, it's just a better X2. And I've heard this is one of the best, or these are some of the best coasters in the world. Even better than like amazing coasters like Steel Vengeance and El Toro. So I definitely think uh, if I ride either one of these, they could have potential of being my number one. So that's why each Nick and Dinoconda are making it onto this list. Alright, so let's move on to the first wooden coaster of this list. And this is T Express at Everland which is the intimate prefab at the park. And this ride looks awesome. So you basically take Balder, but add a couple extra airtime hills, bank turns, and a huge 77 degree drop. And that's basically T-Express. So you have the second half, which is very similar to Balder, but even more aggressive and has a couple extra airtime hills. And you add in that first half, which has a cable lift, a uh, 77 degree drop. It has a huge first major pop of ejector, which I've heard is one of the strongest airtime elements in the world. Uh, add some couple bank turns in there, which look really intense, and then another crazy ejector pop. So I think this would be a really good ride because it just has back-to-back -back ejector, and that's what I love about a coaster. You just look back-to-back -back airtime hills, and plus that first half, which looks really intense. Not super long, but it definitely looks like a great ride. Um, now there aren't that many reviews of this ride just because there aren't a lot of uh, people who have ridden it, but um, it does look like a great coaster from the POVs, which are actually pretty rare, but I'm definitely into sitting in this coaster when I get to ride it. Definitely one of the best coasters in Asia, so that's going to be it for T-Express. So moving on to the next coaster, we're actually moving on to a very unique coaster. This is Karanon at Hansa Park in Germany, and this is a Gerslauer Hyper Infinity Coaster, uh, which is a really crazy concept, and this ride just looks insane. It's got crazy, amazing theming, 
Hudson who got some cool surprises on the lift hill and brake run. Has an insane looking drop, which actually comes out of this huge building. Has this fr crazy uh, first element, which is almost like a non free sea serpent roll, which I've heard is super intense. He gives ridiculous, like, airtime, just whippy laterals. And the rest of it is just crazy yonk transition moments. Insane laterals, insane positive G's, super intense. Looks fast on the way to the break run. Has some more crazy airtime moments. Uh, even has an inversion later, uh, which is during the break run. But this ride definitely looks to really have a lot of great things. Um, definitely a very unique coaster. It is a bit on the shorter side. And I heard it does kind of have a shuffle. Um, not really roughness, but a bit of a shuffle vibration. Which probably wouldn't bother me too much, but it might bother some people. But Karanon definitely looks like a great ride. And I could even see this becoming my number one. And that's why it's on this video. Alright, so moving on to another German coaster, we have Expedition G Force at Holiday Park, the insane looking intimate mega coaster at the park, and this is one of the most critically acclaimed coasters out there. It's been voted Best Steel Coaster by Mitch Paul, and actually been voted really highly um, on Theme Park Review many times, and this ride looks crazy, it just looks to have a ton of airtime, looks to have a crazy, whippy, insane airtime fill drop. Uh, I heard the airtime's really strong, like even gives scattered a little airtime on the vlog of it. It's a long ride, it looks to have some great laterals, um, some decently intense moments, and I've heard the middle section is weaker, but you know, most rides have some sort of dead spot, so I guess it's not a huge deal. But from what I've heard, the beginning and end make it one of the best coasters out there. And it, I've heard it's a really smooth ride as well, and I love those intimate T bars, even as a cable lift too. So yeah, Expedition G-Force is coming on this list because I, it just looks like an insane airtime machine, and I love airtime. Alright, so next up is going to be DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia. And this is an insane looking Mac Hypercoaster. It's only the second one ever built um, after Flash and its clones, I guess, if you count those um, all together. But this ride looks crazy. It has some really insane elements, like an insane twist of first drop, similar to like Karanon or Expedition G Force. Has that first camel back, which looks to get insane. El Toro or Skyrish level ejector air. Um, it looks sustained. You also that non inverting loop, which, if you're riding this coaster backwards, yes, you can actually ride this coaster backwards if you go to the very last row. You actually get negative 2.2 G's on, which looks insane. Um, looks like crazy laterals and airtime on that non-inverting loop, which non-inverting loops are great elements, and that's definitely the best one in the world. You have some other cool elements, like some nice twisty elements, a uh, pretty intense looking helix, a nice looking like stangle dive, even has this like inclined dive loop looking thing. It's a pretty long ride, it looks fairly intense, looks like some great airtime, some really cool elements, uh, looks really well paced, and it's a long ride too. So definitely looks like one of the best coasters in the world, and I think it could be my number one. Alright, so moving on uh, to the first coaster on this list that I've actually ridden already. This is El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure, the intimate prefab of the park. This is an insane coaster. I've only ridden this coaster once, and it was back when I was kind of a GP back in 2016. So I definitely need a re-ride on it. I don't even remember certain parts of the ride, such as the Rolling Thunder Hill. Um, but I remember the drop, the ending, um, some of the middle section, those first two camelbacks are just insane. Um, the middle section is a bit weaker, but the beginning and end are crazy. Uh, I do love the head choppers, it's an insane drop. It's some of the best sustained ejector air on the planet. It is a little rough, but it's super intense. And definitely a really great coaster currently is in my top three. Um, it is my number three. But if I rewrote it, I think it could become a number one, especially if I get some night rides on it, especially if I get that Magic Seed Row 17, which is the second to back row. Um, I definitely think this could be my number one coaster, because I really do like wooden coasters, and this is just an amazing ride. Um, but it's just the fact that I've only ridden it once is kind of a weakness for this ride. But I definitely could see it moving up if I got more rides on it. Alright, so the next coaster I'll be talking about is Voyage at Holiday World. And this just looks like an insane wooden coaster. This is the huge gravity group coaster at the park. And remember how I said I love airtime? 
while this coaster has the second most airtime of any coaster in the world, the most airtime of any wooden coaster, second only um, behind Steel of Engines for coasters in general. And this thing just looks insane. Tons of airtime. It's a crazy long ride. Looks to have an awesome drop. It's got floater and ejector from what I've heard. And just from kind of the looks of it. And it also has insane 90 degree bank turns. Looks to have some great laterals. Uh, has a triple down even. Has some tunnels. Goes through the woods. It definitely looks to keep its pace and intensity throughout the ride. As you know, you're slamming to that brake run with plenty of speed. That final brake run. This ride just has so many air time zones, so many elements back to back to back, which all are great. And I definitely think I would like this coaster because I love back to back air time. This ride has a lot of back to back air time moments. And I just love wooden coasters. Another great thing about this ride is that it has the PTC trains, which definitely allow for plenty of air time room. And it's pretty hard to get stable though, so that's another reason why I think I would like Voyage. And if this coaster can haul enough, I definitely could see it becoming my number one. So there you have it, Voyage at Holiday World. Alright, so the next coaster is going to be the other coaster on this list that I've written. This is Steel Vengeance, and I know some of you might be disappointed that this isn't my number one. Don't get me wrong, I love this coaster. It's just there is one very slave flaw that I'll get to in a little bit, but just talking about what I like about this ride. It has, of course, the most airtime of any coaster in the world. It mixes floater and ejector. It has sustained moments and quick pops of airtime. It's got off axis moments, it has sideways moments. It's got inversions, it's got crazy laterals and transitions. Head choppers, an insane drop. It's a super smooth ride, incredibly long, relentless, aggressive ride. So it's got a lot going for it, however, that mid course brake run definitely does hinder the ride because you lose plenty of speed. And out of all of the I think 15 rides I've on this coaster, including one night ride, every ride was with the trains on, so it wasn't as good, um, like the first few elements after the mid-course were not as good, so I think if I were this coaster with the trains off, definitely could become my number one, especially if I get more night rides, because I only did get one, um, so Steel Vengeance is an amazing ride, I do think it has a lot of likeliness, it is very likely to become my number one. Uh, if I get some more rides on it, it's just I do need more rides on it for it to become a number one. But definitely Steel Engine is still an amazing ride. And I definitely could see becoming my number one. Alright, so the last coaster on this list. On, and I actually put this as the number one coaster in the world. This is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. And I think what this coaster really does is, from what I've heard, it brings the airtime and the intensity. The Steel Vengeance is definitely an airtime machine. And it is really intense, it doesn't have like insane aggressiveness. Like, and it's not super fast throughout the entire ride. Um, it isn't totally about the positive G's. Um, and then you have a ride like I-305, which has intensity but lacks airtime. I think Lightning Rod brings the best of both. It looks to have some of the strongest airtime out there, definitely stronger than Steel Vengeance. Um, from what I've heard, is a better collection of elements than Steel Vengeance has that quad down which could be the best element in the world the launch looks insane uh, the wave turn the outer bank turns look crazy this ride interacts with the terrain which is great it has probably from what i've heard maybe even the best pacing out of any coaster out there um is one of the most if not the most intense wooden coaster out there which has an insane amount of airtime. super crazy aggressive looking ride so i definitely think this is probably i think mm, maybe most likely out of all these to become my number one. Um, I really want to get out to Dollywood to experience this ride because it looks amazing. Probably the best coaster out there. I think if I rode it, it definitely could be my number one. Um, I could even see it be the best coaster in the world. And so there you have it, the 10 best coasters, or the 10 coasters that could be my number one. Um, these are all some of the best coasters in the world probably out there. Um, I'd say they're all maybe top 15 uh, these are probably the most likely coasters to become a number one if i wrote them or rewrote them um so there you have it uh for this video make sure to comment like and subscribe and i'll see you guys later